Hi guys, my name is Matthew Baker. Uh, I'm working on my 1976 Porsche 911. The vehicle has a 1978 engine, transmission, wiring, so we're going to go through and uh, you know use all the resources available for that particular model year. Um, my last video I showed you how to test if your starter is indeed good, if it's getting power, um, if it's not, so you can look back at that video for reference. This particular car, I already know the starter solenoid is bad. We just did a couple of tests under the car that uh, that'll prove whether the solenoid's good, whether the starter's good, that kind of thing. So um, the next step that I'll show you is how to test for your um, your starter switch. And this is a little bit more complicated, but we're going to start off with the basic, you know, first steps of um, identifying whether the car has power or not. So again, my last video I showed I have some basic tools here. My multimeter, a couple of screwdrivers, pliers, Bentley manual, which you can buy online for, you know, this particular car. I'm sure many other cars have the uh, Bentley manual as well available. And specifically for the 911 SC, you've got uh, schematic on page 270-7 of your starter, of your terminals. The um, terminal to your line o'clock position is the power. You should have 12 volts to that full time. You know, across the way from that, that uh, the 3 o'clock position, you've got your starter winding, which doesn't have any connections. It just um, activates the starter once you have power to the solenoid. Number 2 there, uh, that's going to be at your 12 o'clock position. That's your uh, solenoid, and that's what's called terminal 50 from the ignition switch that should when the key is turned to start that should receive full power and then that should in turn um, send the current to terminal number three which will activate the starter gear and get the car started number four and a lot of cars probably don't have this one um, or sorry not a lot of non Porsches uh, won't have this one but four is for the cold uh, the cold start valve so we're not too worried about that for the sake of this video. Next page on 270-8, you have common starting issues. Again, a little diagram of what could go wrong and how to solve it. So a pretty helpful little guide. First thing, as I mentioned before, let's make sure that you have full power because the car will not start if you don't have full power. Got my multimeter set to 20 DC volts. My terminals. I've got power at the battery. We got ground. Readings at 12.32. Eh, roughly 70 to 75 percent charged, which should be plenty for starting this car. And on this particular vehicle I already identified that the solenoid is bad because I am getting full power to the solenoid, but if you turn the key, everything works. It just doesn't start. And the starter gear isn't even turning, nothing's engaging. So, at first I thought this could be a simple, you know, ignition switch could be faulty. I've replaced the starter three different times. Um, unfortunately, the quality of these rebuild starters is very poor. I worked for an auto parts company specializing for parts for these cars, and we just heard terrible things about these. Um, Bosch rebuilt starters, so um, if you have the time, might as well take it to a reputable starter repair shop and have them uh, have them rebuild it. Now in my other video I ran through the different connections on the starter, and I'm under the car right, right now. You can see the starter right there, uh, again, you've got your, well, it's kind of hard to see, but big black cable onto your three, 9 o'clock position. <clears throat> that one's full power. This one should always have 12 volts going to it right across the way from it. At your, um, at your 3 o'clock position is your starter winding. Uh, that does not have any connections. That just carries the power from, uh, from this guy which I disconnected. This is your starter solenoid um, wire. That goes at the very top at the 12 o'clock position up here. This one should have power, um, should have 
at least according to the Bentley manual, anything above 7.5 volts should be going to this wire, should be going into the starting solenoid when the car is turned to the start position. Um, again, if it's not turned to the start position, obviously it's going to have zero, uh, you know, zero volts going to it. It's only activated when you um, put the car in start. So my last video I showed you, you know, how to check that with a multimeter. All you do is just put one, um, just put one terminal of your multimeter, the red, you know, red uh, cable. Put that into the one of the little sockets, one of the spades of the uh, of your solenoid, solenoid wire. The other end should go, you know, get a good ground. My ground straps there, so it, you know, it'll reach. Just put one end of your other end of your multimeter, you know, just shove it in there. Then have somebody go up to the car, turn it to the start position. If you're not getting any volts whatsoever, then that's definitely going to be a problem with that wire or the wiring going to the ignition switch or the ignition switch itself. So let's go and check that out. Okay, so now we're assuming that the switch is bad, which in this car we know it's good. Um, but in order to sort of diagnose this, in the case that we're not getting any power to that little solenoid wire, we're going to go down here. This car, by the way, has been modified significantly, and you know a lot of the wiring is kind of, you know, not exactly purest approved, I'm sure. But, anyways. And the ignition switch is obviously right here. What you want to do is you want to go up from it. Uh, your car might be different. Mine's obviously been messed with a lot late, you know, in the past 40 years. But stick the wiring down off here, and then what you'll see, you do that. What you should see is the ignition switch which it just comes, uh, comes off in two pieces. I'm going to see if I can get a light to show you better. So you can probably see, yep, right there, that's the ignition switch. It comes off, um, this is actually two pieces here, sorry. So you can actually just, you know, wiggle, wiggle that off um, and that'll just come off completely. There's another connection which goes into the uh, into the luggage compartment, which is um, one of these round guys. In, in particular, that round uh, that round guy right there, into the to the left. That one goes into the luggage compartment and continues on to uh, go to your battery, um, to your starter itself. So, anyways. Uh, make sure that you clearly mark before you take this off. Make sure that you clearly mark the um, the switch. It can really only go on one way, but it's just a lot easier if you mark it. I've done this project uh, about ten years ago with my dad. He showed me how to work on auto electric, so I do have an old Porsche 911 ignition switch. This was originally from uh, the last one that was on here. So again. This is the back end of it. That just, you know, goes on. You have your key like right here. This goes on the back. So again, this wiggles off. Be sure to uh, disconnect your battery before working on this because who knows what can happen. <laughs> um, so anyways, assuming that this is in the car, you've taken that off this back of the switch. This is the piece that goes into the, uh, into the luggage compartment. Um, just pull that out. And then, essentially, this should be dangling from your dash at this point. So, 
if you want to see if the switch is good, the switch, the back of the switch actually comes off, so you just get a small screwdriver under here. And you're just going to take little tabs off. And luckily I had this before. Be very careful on how you do this because the wires are in here loose. And this is the only thing holding everything together inside. So that's the inside of the switch. You know, these are all of the, um, all of the connectors. Again, on the other side, you have the markings. The Bentley manual will tell you what those are for. In particular, if you're not getting power to the solenoid, it's going to be, um, it's actually going to be due to terminal 50 right here. That is the wire when you turn the key to press start. Um, that wire is supposed to have power. It goes from here, and essentially it's this yellow wire, which for some reason we had cut off um, 10 years ago when we were working on this car. The yellow wire here which goes into here and I believe it connects either into that little nub or that little nub um, and that yellow wire goes through and I'll show you in the luggage compartment. Yours may be different than mine because mine's been modified a whole lot. But essentially it's going to come up through this little tunnel at this point, it's probably going to be in a wiring harness if your car is stock. Mine, as you can clearly tell, isn't. And mine actually ran through here. Um, what I noticed was somebody had originally spliced, cut this uh, solenoid wire and taped it. So yesterday I removed the tape, inspected the solder joint, found a lot of corrosion. So I, you know, cleaned that up and uh, taped it up again. And in this case, mine runs all the way down through this yellow solenoid wire. Goes actually goes in to the back of this fuel pump relay. Um, actually, what it does is it goes into number 87. Let's see if I can get a better close up. Yeah, number 87, sort of that top, you know, 12, 1 o'clock position. So it essentially goes in, you know. Um, it is supposed to connect up to the terminal back here. So what we can do is put that back together first. So essentially um, what you can do, you have the ignition switch apart, you know, let's say right now. You're going to take your multimeter. And assuming this is still inside the car, you know, go to, uh, you're going to go to um, the, one of the terminals, you know, just to check if you have continuity. Uh, just go in and maybe connect one end into number 50, whichever number 50 is here. Uh, connect the other end here. Set your voltmeter to ohms. And then you should have, you know, connectivity at least through here. You can check connectivity that way. Um, you can also do what somebody else did with this car and just cut the, uh, cut the wire in the luggage compartment. I mean, it's not recommended, but if you do want to check for continuity, you can go find that wire, cut it, see if you have continuity. Um, another thing you could do if you want to see if you have continuity at a different point is to remove this uh, fuel pump relay. You know, connect one end, connect the end uh, where number 87 goes. And for continuity, again, put one here, take your other end, and um, find where that yellow wire is. And again, since somebody cut it, I wanted to check for continuity, so I put it here. I knew I had continuity from, from the switch up to this point. I wanted to see from this point to this point whether I had continuity. 
I did, so I know that the wire was good, at least on, uh, on this end. Okay, so now, if you've checked for continuity, you have continuity, go back to your starter, check that wire again, you know, have somebody turn it to start. If it does not get power in the start position, then it's probably the problem is most likely in your ignition switch. So, again, the switch is this thing right here the end cap comes off, you know, you might have some corrosion in here, you know, you might be able to clean it up, you might be able to, um, you know, make it work, but you know, this one was in really bad shape. But uh, yeah, you could try to clean it up, put it back in, see if it works. If not, uh, you know, I recommend just buying a new ignition switch online um, and doing it that way, and it just comes in like this little uh, piece. So uh, that's really all there is to it on, on checking the uh, starter solenoid, seeing if it has power. Again, if it has continuity all the way back, um, back to the starter, then most likely it's going to be your ignition switch. Again, assuming that you have battery power, assuming that uh, you have power actually going to the ignition switch. So that's all there is to it for, you know, checking this guy and uh, checking for power going to the solenoid. Um, so I hope that was a little bit helpful. Sorry if, uh, you know, uh, by different camera angles couldn't capture everything, but, you know, trying to work out here in 105 degree heat is a bit challenging too. So anyways, hope this, hope this was helpful, and uh, stay tuned for the next video.